Very good point. Now, with all of our speculation aside and all of our uh, our lead up into this actual match, you probably want to know how the community thinks these two teams will shake out. We'll bring it up, and well, not really much of a surprise. There are Immortals dominating that poll, as you'd expect. Yeah, that's that is not terribly surprising at all. I mean, Immortals are the team that have a much better recent track record. On top of that, I think if you even look back to the last season, they're going to be in a much better track record than Pain. So across the board, I think they're definitely the team that's slotted to win this. Going into the match, though, now that we have more information than those voting in the community vo uh, poll, we also know that Pain does have a little bit of an edge at the first half of Villa, all things considered, in terms of them going on defense. But speaking of that, uh, let's actually get into the match. We have Villa ready for you guys, and uh, we'll see what the actual outcome is. I always like seeing the way that teams uh, approach Villa just because it does end up being very unique. There's a number of different preferences that teams will have in regards to, you know, where they start, whether it's going to be upstairs in AVG, as you said, which is just shorthand for Aviator Games. You might notice that from time to time, the casters will call things by different names. A good example of this would be a console office upstairs. And then you have, what is it, meeting hall, technically it's called, or something along conference room. But everybody just calls it projector. projector. We yeah. do that with shorthands. You also will call the back of Coastline Projector as well. So Aviator Games is likely going to be the very first place to start off with. But until we get there, we have to get through these bands. And the very first one will go to Pain. They're going to select first and last. They'll use Glass, and then keeping with Hibana's high ban rate, she'll be added to the ban list by Immortals. Same with Glass, pretty high ban rate as well. So overall, nothing too out of the ordinary here so far. Mira, also pretty high ban rate. She's going to be taken out by Immortals. And then we'll see what happens here. I'm guessing an Echo or a Maestro. We very rarely see a match these days where neither are banned. And there it is. Echo being taken out as the last operator gone. So pretty standard fare here in the ban phase. A Glass is a very powerful operator, especially on Villa. So that's, I think, really a good pick for Pain Gaming. And we'll be going to Aviator Games, or AVG, for the first site. Again, pretty standard fare across the board here so far. Lots of information being the emphasis for Pain Gaming, or a little bit of information denial. We almost had the Pulse being brought out there from Revolts, but they've opted for the Mute instead. It might possibly six pick there, but no, actually it's going to be the Jaeger for the Legion. That's quite interesting. Legion definitely a very powerful operator, especially so on this site. Uh, actually, just in general on this map, lots of great places for Legion to be used, but uh, I gotta say, it's going to be weird not having that Jaeger for the defense, especially considering how many throwables projectiles are on the attacker's side. We got those grenades from the bot that are going to be very useful if placed correctly. It's likely though that the buck will decide to go under the site and try to use those grenades through his ceiling their floor, as we so often see be being the case. One thing as well for immortals that might they might not know at this moment until they do drone out the lesion and realize that there won't be a Jaeger on the board is that this Montane of M King is going to have those two smokes that won't necessitate burning ADSs for them. That means that your Ash is going to be able to get Attackers quite a bit of value off of those three flashbangs if you see Immortals read into that correctly, which is a big if. There's no, there's never a given there, necessarily. Yeah, I mean, of course that uh, reveal phase did uh, reveal a Jaeger, so they're going to be imagining the ADSs are in plays, yes. are in play rather. So something they'll have to adapt to in the middle of the round. Now, overall, looks like just as what we expected. Bullet's going to be pushing his way downstairs. Under the site, he can use his skeleton key and frag grenades to wreak some havoc on the anchors. And uh, that is definitely going to be a big part of how Immortals attack this. I like how they've isolated the roamers so efficiently. Um, I'm a little worried there that uh, we're seeing him come off of the flank hold. That's uh, definitely going to be dangerous. He will be getting some new jammers, so good use of his utility there. But... At the same time, Bomb leaving those uh, gaps open in the defense or the defense of the attack. Obviously, there's a strategy behind banning a the Mira from Immortal's located. side of things, but when you really consider it, teams have often been foregoing a Mira here. First little bit of contest actually is going to be that flank hold of FK1. He's going to be found downstairs by Bullet. So you're going to have the Buck do an excellent job of being able to find him. With Cyber still holding and looking to see if there's going to be yet another body that gets. Uh, 
gets removed from play from Pain's side of things. A bit sloppy to be losing your Legion so early on. It's curious that the Legion is the one going for that roaming flank. Uh, usually you wouldn't see him be that operator as he, his value uh, gets greater over time. That uh, decision was made and now Pain are in an even more tricky spot. Rolt's doing his best to deny entry to the B-bomb site. And all he's got is a C4 to counter that Montaigne who's going to take the reduced damage thanks to shield. You can see here one of the biggest parts of Villa is its destructibility. That's actually why Mira is ran so infrequently by a number of teams. So I'm actually kind of surprised, as I was going to say, that she was banned out. A lot of teams will just simply forego running her because, as you saw from what we had at a bullet below, he's able to just chew up that entire floor and would essentially get a mirror window on the other side of it. Gabrielos will get away and bless his lucky stars as he's got one to two HP. Rotating over towards the Aviator doorway, waiting to see if anyone's going to push in. There's the Ash position on the other side of things. Near, near that telltale side of the Aldis, GCR will engage and lose a lot of his HP as well. 30 seconds left, and this is likely to get messy. Now as Immortals begins their assault on the site. Gabrielos is completely out of toxic canisters, so it's going to be very difficult to stop that Monte. Navis will jump on a kill, and Cyber is there. Both guns from Immortals doing great work. Revolts. Helps out with the Mute to take out one, but M-King is going to continue to push in, and this smoke with only 1 to 2 HP is in rough shape. Confronting M-King and dropping the shield for just a second will allow the Montane to be vulnerable, but return fire after I think that smoke realized there was nowhere to go. Locked in the vault, and he'll be let loose. That's the first round for Immortals. Beautiful play there from Immortals. They did pretty much everything right. They managed to contain Study, get control of the main hallway, and 90, and... They didn't fully commit to 90, but they had lose control, and that's what's important. They cut off that rotation. On top of that, they pushed themselves downstairs, and they isolated the flank very efficiently. They were able to use bullets, buck, skeleton key, and grenades to do a lot of damage to the anchors and force pain into a bit of a scurry. As you saw, all of those anchors in the site moving from point to point to point because they're constantly being harassed from below. They've got a Montaigne pushing into the site, inching in ever closer and really... Fo uh, forcing focus Attackers shift for those anchors. And on top of that, Pain made a couple poor decisions of their own. I mean, we saw FK1, for some reason, being on the far north roam. I'm not really sure what he was hoping to accomplish there. I understand the idea behind the roam, but why are we committing a lesion of all operators to that role? Just seemed like a poor decision there from Pain. Now, they're going to be going back to the same site, sticking to AVG. Not terribly surprising, all things considered, but... Ten seconds to go. Definitely going to be a bit of a risk if Payne loses this twice in a row. That will put them in a really tricky left. spot. We talked about how you want to win your defenses on Villa, and AVG is Attackers widely considered to be one of the easiest to defend sites. So if you're unable to take it, then it becomes a little bit more tricky when you go to those other sites. Yeah, you need to make sure that you have good breach denial here, which both the Mute and the Bandit will accomplish on Pain's side of things. I don't necessarily know how I feel about them not choosing to go with that uh, Maestro, instead just running with the Valkyrie in place, especially knowing that you have an IQ, because those Evil Eye cams from the Valkyrie can taken out, be taken out much easier than an Evil Eye cam. I mean, they're also forgoing a, a Jaeger, which is just a bit of an odd choice from Pain's side. They have a lot of different decisions being made here. On, on Pain Gaming's team right now for their defensive lineup. Yeah. Once again, Immortals at the bottom of the main floor, just waiting ever so patiently. The right decision, I think, to make and not bother to hurry this, as you obviously don't want them uh, getting, a, you don't want them getting ahead of themselves. Immortals have been able to take over just the side towards 90 at the top of the main stairs, looking down what is referred to as classical, or classical hall. You've got spawns downstairs, too, as the Valkyrie with a C4 in hand. This is something that Payne failed at and actually could have really helped on their defense, was that plant denial and the ability to put some emphasis on slowing down the push on site by having a body below. Bigger problem with that, though, is that if you don't get the kill with that C4, you have to rotate back to site and might end up getting boxed out. It's also Immortals being so efficient at clearing out under the site, so I'm sure they probably would try to force those defenders out of position but Payne's going for a more of a horizontal roam this time around. They've got FK playing by 90, which is a, actually a good position for the Legion. If you're going to have him roaming, this is a good spot to do it. Um, you've got his support as well of GCR. So a little bit of a double team there. But M-King is the optimal operator to D 
deal with this situation. He's taken a lot of damage, actually, already early into this round, so that's a tricky spot, but he will take down Gabulos with an excellent, excellent ADS there from the Montaigne. Smoke exposing himself unwittingly. PX able to get another one, so Immortals putting themselves up two players early in this round. Pretty damning to lose your smoke, especially given how low HP the Montaigne of M. King has. Two from Pain, though, will be traded off by Navi's eliminating Revolt. And that's C4 excellently placed. Spawn's coming back to site in a perfect way. Though he'll be confronted with the Ash of Navi's, and of course, one of the most hyperactive fraggers in terms of operating potential. Navi's going for the plant. That'll be seven seconds down with Spawn's trying to attract uh -oh. the noise and force the Ash off, but the Attack full commit the from Navi's will prompt spawns to have to go back around. On the opposite side, looking towards the vault doorway as Navi's just retreats, but there might be a Valkyrie camera out there giving information. Don't want to ping the Ash too early on. Gonna really fall on what spawns was capable to do in the prep phase here, as he now reads this correctly. He pushes over, and it's an easy kill for Navi, who's prone in the middle of that classical hall, and Immortals will win two attacks in a row. Troubling start for Pain Gaming. Certainly a round that uh, Immortals should have lost, Payne felt like they were in the driver's seat for a couple moments there, but some really choice mistakes were the reason that Immortals were able to bring that back. Yeah, it was a really nice attempt at the clutch there in the end, but uh, just wasn't enough from the Valkyrie. We'll be going back to AVG for the third time in a row. Nope, okay, last minute change there from Payne, and I think the right decision. Good call. Yeah, definitely a good call going to Trophy instead. I wonder if this cav change is going to go through. No, that's that's a smart move. Change off of the cav. You don't necessarily need her. I would six pick off to maybe a bandit or a mute or lesion. Or they already have a mute. Rather, I got thrown off for a second there with the with the elite. I just quickly glanced over and I was like, oh, I don't see a mute on there. Oh wait, wait a minute, <laughs> he I, looks different. I'm still freaking out about the whole no a. <laughs> okay, so we don't have a Jaeger, do we? And we don't have a maestro, but who do we have? A frost. I mean, clearly uh, they, frost. they're they they're having trouble with that Montaigne and they're trying to find solutions. I mean, you could run a Capkin. We saw the way the G2 played on this map, and on this site in particular, actually, mm -hmm. with a Capkin, how effective that was, especially for a team that might be aggressive. Immortals have done a decent time in yeah, getting into the site, but then they slow down a little bit. They finish out their droning. They move their Five two flank left. watchers towards the site push. They might get caught, which is what happened with Pain. You had spawns come in very impactfully as that Valkyrie and did good cleanup work, got two kills, playing just outside of the game's room. I'm surprised that uh, you won't see a Capkin. The way the Frost is going to be played here, though, is probably, I would imagine, they're going to contest Master as long as they can. You put the traps under those windows, you have somebody playing in bathroom, maybe somebody playing in the doorway from the site over towards Master, and then you just watch. The other thing, too, that an IQ can do against a Capkin but can't do against a Frost is figure out the location of those traps. Now, good drone work will determine where those traps are, Michael, but it might not have the time to drone effectively, and if you go to vault in, it could be to your doom as a trap lays beneath you. That they're just relying on the uh, one-shot power of those frost traps to get the down on the Montaigne. I mean, that's, that's the only reason I can imagine they're picking the frost. This is a dangerous play here from Bullet. Coming up from the basement. He sees their open drop down though, and it looks like he's gonna reevaluate, try to come from somewhere else. Probably the right call. No reason to take an unnecessary risk there. You get to the middle floor elsewhere. Great use here again. Sebera getting those mute jammers. Able to put the utility soundly in his team's favor. The mute has been pretty much useless all of these rounds in terms of his utility. And I'm not sure that Payne is aware of that, or they're noticing their Mute Jammers are being dispatched so easily, because I imagine if they were aware, they would have decided to bring somebody else at this point. But yeah. no, they've been sticking to it so far. Spawn's looking for a peek outside. He's going to be droned out, though, by PX, and uh, there is actually roam clear there on the main stairs. Potential for an easy frag here if Spawn's continues to expose himself, but it's going to require somebody else from Immortals droning Spawn's out as he is relocated to Billiards. Spawns has been very elusive the last round, and he was able to come back to site appropriately. As I touched on in the previous round, though, if you flank incorrectly, you could find yourself getting fed upon. Navis will be able to prove that, as FK1 was just a little bit too far removed from site, and as the Frost did attempt, 
to get back while well, you get caught out. And it actually looked like FK1 knew that there was going to be an encounter slash skirmish there and prepared for it, but ultimately didn't end up landing the shots. And that's a hard thing to do against an Ash that's hard holding as an angle as well as she was. M King's advance through the master bedroom and then through the master bathroom will not be inhibited by neither a mute jammer nor a lesion mine as he sees a toxic canister which will get detonated at any second. The moment that that shield drops, the audio cue from the smoke will go out, but it's actually placed incorrectly. Navi's picking up his second kill on the spawn, so there will be no repeat from the Valkyrie. Navi's looking for yet another as he lights up GCR, but the Legion will survive, at least for the time being. Gabrielos peaks and oh, bad timing as M King goes down, but it's a volley from both teams as everybody gets on the board, except for Revolt, who gets one on Navi's, but his last man standing gets gunned down and hunted by the IQ of Cyber, giving Immortals round three of three. Yeah, and that's uh, three successful attacks, no less, on Villa of all maps. So, impressively done for Immortals. They could draw this half, but if you look at it in terms of weight value rounds, Immortals have won the half already. They're just going to get extra padding now if they manage to take more rounds away. One thing that really surprises me is that the second time we've seen Gavrilos uh, give his life away for no apparent reason to the Montaigne. I don't know why he's not actually a little bit more diligent, especially as the smoke on the Montaigne. I feel as though that's his, I mean, that's one of the biggest reasons you bring a smoke is they counter the shield play. You can throw a gas canister at him and then go do other things instead of looking away from the Montaigne and exposing yourself unnecessarily. Uh, that's two rounds in a row that he's been taken out by an ADS in Montaigne. Not something you want to see. Aside from that, though, uh, one thing I really do want to note is that Navi's solo hunted two roamers off-site, and there was no one droning for him. It was just him and actual angle play and gunplay. I'm glad you brought that up, because I was going to say, from Camera what we saw, there was no drone available. So he basically just walked right in. There was just, like, one initial drone. That to make sure that operate. his path was clear. Yeah, and then it got shot, and then he, he fought two people by himself. It's just impressive. It's a really good job by Navi's. Uh, he certainly opened that round up for his team, and it could have been a pain gaming round if he was unsuccessful, because when the actual, you know, brawl came out, pain gaming did not slouch too much. So they were still in that round, potentially, if they had those extra two roamers, or even just one of them maybe survived. I was honestly expecting spawns to be victorious there, but no. I think that Spawn's coming back was obviously the right call to make from Pain. When you lose a body that early on, especially a roamer, you're, and you realize how close the attackers are to attacking site, you gotta bring somebody in, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, you'll bring them in if you were successful. If that Frost had gotten that kill, it's very likely that FK1 would have gotten the kill he needed, and they would have said, okay, you've done your job, come back. Wasn't really the case, and as Pain Gaming kept losing manpower, the way that that site is designed up is you can overrun people quite easily because there's so many open spaces. And a lot of the defenders will shoot out those walls around the site, which means that if you're on a 5v5 and you don't have as much utility as the defenders or you're wary of what the defenders might have, you're going to be very patient to attack a site that is completely opened up like that because you anticipate that they're going to be holding something in the uh, in their arsenal. Not really the case in that regard, and Immortals just barnstormed in. Also, all of that utility denial, that breach denial from GCR's bandit batteries, we just witnessed get completely taken out by Cyber's era downstairs. Yeah, Cyber, oh wow, what a shot from FK on 90. Navi's goes down, and that is a huge pain taken out by the Maestro. And uh, that's, I believe, the first round we're seeing Maestro actually being picked, already proving to be a good choice there by FK1. And, uh, yeah, no, Cyber's been doing a great job of um, taking care of all of the uh, utility from below throughout this match, actually. And, again, I really do feel as though there's some other operators that could be picked, maybe, to alleviate that. They've already decided to bring the Maestro, though, and that's a good choice, in my opinion. Again, it's going to be countered by the Ash charges, but uh, Ash is dead, at least in this round. So, there you go. Good initial round for pain a second for fk1 from 90 as px goes down trying to peek around mk shield so this is a great start from pain just really bringing the fire but it's going to be a trade-off losing the maestro revolts also low on hp is the literal shield of montage standing in the doorway trying to keep all of the mortals alive a good read there but 
Rock. Say goodbye to M King as he puzzlingly keeps turning his shield to the Valkyrie every single round mm. to give a 4v2 in Payne's favor and the best look they've had so far on defense. Cyber currently, who I, I mistakenly called Cyber Zera, but I think it really applied in, in that regard. <laughs> uh, Cybera, as he's being known as here, will now need to be the only member of his team to carry the rest of the way. His bullet gets felled and then finished off with one in Classical Hall. Cybera just bopping along to the beat of his own drum, and he's going to look for another body, but everybody from Pain is just completely hiding and hidden inside of sight. He doesn't even have the diffuser, so I think he realizes at this point, you got to concede that round. Save whatever utility you have, even though it doesn't carry over. And Pain get very fortunate to finally be able to put one round on the board especially on defense, which they probably should have had at least one through those first three rounds, but now's a pretty good time to start winning, as Immortals has, at worst, drawn through the first half. Better late than never, all things considered. And I think a lot of it has to do with FK1's excellent gunplay from 90, able to get those two frags early on and really slow down the Immortals' attack. Playing Maestro. Again, the first time that Payne picked Maestro, and the first round that they managed to take. Don't want to take away from FK1's excellent gunplay, but a lot of it does come down to how much opportunity he has using that ACOG and all those bullets in such a good position. Now, going forward, we are going to be going to Trophy Room. Last time, of course, we saw pain here. They were hopefully unsuccessful. Uh, really dominant round for Immortals, actually. But it was due to some really, I, I would say, lucky plays on Immortals' side. Uh, Navi is again solo hunting down two roamers. No droning for him in a bit of a jungle on the south side of the building. It's impressive, and you can't rely on it happening every single round. So if we see a little bit of shift here, we difference uh, in the Navi's success. This could be a pain round, and they could get closer to equalizing this half. It's going to be a real test, I think, for Payne to see if that round was just a flash in the pan or not. Not to take anything away from them, but the first couple rounds, I, I think the adjustments that Payne Gaming made were fine, but they ultimately just weren't read well by Immortals, I think, or were, were read well by Immortals, rather. And I think Immortals can make a good recovery here as they have, I, I think, indisputably looked like the better team so far. And being able to take three rounds on attack on Villa really exemplifies how good Immortals have been so far, which is in keeping with Immortals' prowess so far this season, too, and through a little bit of the last season prior. Mm -hmm. Now, with this utility work from below, the IQ is obviously going to be a pretty important linchpin of this strategy, finding the mute jammers, and then just Man. very delicately taking care of it, running that silencer, so or suppressor, rather, on the pistol, not really alerting Pain Gaming to where IQ is. And if they're not listening actively, or if there's comms in the way, then this could be the utility being taken out on pain side of things without them being none the wiser. Yeah, this is the same. We've been seeing every single round. Sephira comes downstairs and just one little piece of utility after another cleans up the site and the immediate vicinity surrounding site. I mean, this is just confusing that it's being allowed by pain. I feel as though they could roam downstairs. I mean, they have a pulse. Revolts is there. And yeah, he's going to be countered by the IQ, but in a straight up gunfight, now, there might be a solution there for Pain. I mean, Immortals have been committing very hard to clearing under the site every round. Maybe an opportunity lies there for Pain to uh, find, uh, find a, a kill or two and slow down Immortals' round overall. I'm really surprised with how little presence Pain has on this first floor. Knowing that there's a buck, knowing that there's an IQ every single time, mm -hmm. we're basically making their workshop that first floor. Almost non-existent map control from pain below. And because of this, not only are you going to lose all that utility, but slowly but surely, you're going to allow the attackers to chip away at where you stand. And as you can see, that entire wall over by the master bedroom side of things is completely free at the moment due to both the buck and the IQ that have had no problem being able to take that away from pain down below. Comes down to experience, I think, on Villa. I'll get to, I'll get to that later, though. As the round, it looks like it's going to really start Going into the action phase as we come down to the last 35 seconds. Thermite's going to open up the wall from Master into Statuary. And that's going to give good access to the A-bomb site. FK is still in a position, though, to deny. He's got his evil eyes as well. So if there are any smokes that go down, he will be able to see through them, at least on the camera. 
He won't need to though. As M King goes down to FK sitting in a corner, that's a second and a third for FK1. Excellent gunplay from the corner of Statuary. A C4 from Valkyrie will find its mark, but not enough damage to get the kill. Bullet with the refrag or repeak and the frag. Pulls out his own frag with Gabrielos from behind. Just dropping down. Payne taking another round. That's two in a row for them. Excellent fragging potential, as you mentioned. Really quarterbacked by that maestro, being able to get those three kills. Unheard of for a maestro to be able to get a 3K like that. Such an unusual concept with an operator who happens to have an LMG and an ACOG and 80 bullets. I've never heard that before. Yeah, so picking maestro has, in two rounds in a row, afforded Pain Gaming a man advantage. Uh, again, I do not want to take away from FK1, who has been playing that maestro to perfection. So serious props to him. On top of that, though, Immortals have been almost, it seems like, blind to Maestro's position every round. It's a little bit confusing, uh, what we saw M-King do there with the Montane. I feel as though Immortals could, uh, could do well with a little bit more information gathering before they go into the site. A six pick from the Maestro to the Maestro there, on Payne's side. Good decision, I think. Um... Okay, one thing I did want to touch on is uh, we were talking about the, the map control for Pain. Uh, and the, I think the reason that they're not roaming underneath is because Villa is one of those maps. It's a really big map, in case you guys haven't noticed. And it's kind of confusing for some teams when they're just starting to play it. And it, not every team, I know this is going to surprise some people, but not every team have figured out how to play this map vertically yet. We have seen... A very impressive job from Immortals so far in this ma uh, match in terms of their vertical play. They've been doing a lot more than what we're used to seeing. We often see the buck. We don't always see the IQ. It does happen. And I think one of the, the more proficient Villa teams will be doing that frequently. But Payne maybe aren't used to playing against those more proficient Villa teams. And because of that, they're not really worried about vertical control. And you said it yourself. It's possible that Payne don't even know they're losing this utility until it's too late. Right. And they've just been using great fragging potential to counter that. And Immortals... Uh, Immortals did seem a little slower over those last two rounds as well. Let's be honest with that. The pace that Immortals set in the first three rounds, I think, was a little quicker. And I think that really matters. Because when you have 10 to 20 extra seconds to be able to maybe go on a drone, maybe make a rotate that you need to, Mabel, you know, Mabel, maybe double up on where you're going to push from. That kind of thing, that 10, 20 seconds, that could make or break a round here. Volts downstairs knows that there's a potential for a run out as he catches a couple of bodies just outside of the kitchen. And what will be the second last, or rather the last defense, my apologies, uh, for here, for pain, as I completely trip all over my words. It's okay. It happens from time to time. Forgive you, Park. Thank you, Michael. This is the first time we've seen Kitchen defended by Payne. Uh, I think it's the first time we've even seen a defender located in Kitchen in this whole match, as they haven't been roaming vertically, as we said earlier, at least not terribly much. They did a little bit in the first round, did not work out for them. So Immortals are taking it fairly slowly. Uh, you said it yourself, uh, you said it yourself, and I'll, I'll repeat it. Immortals have slowed down over the course of these last three rounds, and it is a little bit perplexing, I have to say. I'm not sure what has caused this uh, hitting the brakes. It's definitely not working out for them, and I think they need to speed things back up. Absolutely, and now, attacking Kitchen can be really troublesome if you can't dry out the utility or bleed dry the utility from pain side of things, because there's a lot of fragging potential that can happen on Kitchen, especially with the way these tight angles are held. You saw one right there from FK1, speaking of, but he'll get traded off as he loses two members of his teams. The dual SAS combo of both the Smoke and the Mute have been felled and removed from action. Now FK1 will get dropped too, which means that the site play is collapsing and will prompt Revolts to come right back up. He'll manage to catch Cyber looking the other way. I keep wanting to call him Cyber Zera now because of his name. And he, as well as the Valkyrie here, will need to work for the rest of the site. But there's a major problem, and that's the Diffuser going down successfully. A risky gambit from Revolts as he'll run outside and tussle with the Thermite, but his position given away and an easy read from PX to get that final kill. It's leaving spawns upstairs. Having to go back to site against the three remaining members of Immortals, one of which happens to be a shield. It's going to be especially problematic. That C4 in the hands of the Valkyrie could possibly take one of the three remaining members, but M-King is at full HP. Unless something goes catastrophically wrong on the Montane side, that Nitro Cell won't be able to take 100% of his HP. But Hot on spawns his heels as Bullet, and he'll collapse on it with the beautiful skin reminding me of my home country of Canada, which, yes, is very real. 
as Milos had asked if it was a real country just a couple days ago on broadcast. As real as the day is long. Excellent round from Immortals to steal the attack by a score of 4-2. to two. And I said that it was troubling for paying through those first three rounds. But now that you look at the side swaps here, if Immortals is hot out the gate, this match could be very quickly over. You know what I'm a huge fan of, Parker? Canada. That, yes. Well, it gave us you. You have you have no choice but to say yes to that, because if you say no, well, whole the people will be angry. Yeah, list of uh, list of unhated nations. It's just us. It's Canada. I'm just I'm just I'm just playing. There's plenty of those. But <laughs> what I really do like, Parker, Maestro and Jaeger, on Immortals, right off the bat. They didn't even Defenders six pick into it. They just hey, here you go, by attackers. Maestro and Jaeger. I mean. We didn't see Jaeger from Pain at all. It's kind of confusing. They looked like they wanted to pick it early on, and it actually did work against them in a number of instances. Catching those grenades, catching those projectiles, whatever. You know, it is very useful. And it's nice to see Immortals bringing that as a tool. They've also brought uh, the Mute as well, instead of the Smoke, which is interesting. Not exactly uh, what everyone would do, especially considering they know how efficient that IQ can be downstairs. There will be an IQ brought by Pain Gaming, so if they're able to play it as proficiently as Immortals did, it might have some equally free utility taken out here. New feed active. Overall, though, I do like the operator selection from Immortals on this defensive half. But I also like the ones that uh, Pain have decided to bring. They have a good mix of soft destruction and hard destruction, as well as still bringing the IQ, which is fantastic. It's going to be able to clear out a lot of that utility. Interesting that they're bringing the sledge instead of the buck. So we've got we've got a really, uh, I think, difference of opinion here between I mean, uh, Pain and Immortals in terms of what Operator is best to bring. GCR going to eat some damage early on, trying to clear out those roamers. He's got a drone in front of him, but not progressing into astro Astrology, and it's actually going to be M-King to win that, that fight. That is puzzling. Yeah. That is a head-scratcher. Serious loss and there, and that's a second one there for Immortals. Is, that is as well. And yeah, you're going to down Cyber in the process, but Michael, what is that entry? No one's droning for them, Parker. Almost completely blind, and if not blind, then the drone work was really lackluster. Well, the drones were getting destroyed before they could push into the rooms, and... Okay, there you go, a third for Immortals, and Bullet... Doing a lot of work, picking up his teammate and getting two kills. And there you go, Nobby's gonna walk out on spawns like it isn't even a thing. And okay, the last player will die, not even seeing his opponents. That was a terrible round. A slaughter. A terrible round. Mm -hmm. For Pain Gaming, that was textbook in why you drone, why support players matter, and why you check your corners, and why you make sure that when you're entering, you have people there with you. Now, Also, why you win your gunfights. I mean, let's be honest, there was a lot of situations there where Pain were losing straight-up gunfights. Yes, but I mean, you'd be better prepared to win those gunfights if you had information as well. Fair, I mean, but at the same time, when you when you have the tracers flying at you, if you're not able to reciprocate, I mean, I'm, I'm really surprised there by the way that Payne chose to bring that up. I mean, refracts, that's another thing. Why are we clearing two different doors and not one with two people and able to refrag each other? I mean, I mean, inside of the bathroom, we saw the ash go down to, I believe it was the, the mm -hmm. pulse that was playing by the doorway of, inside of Astronomy. Bathroom is not a position where you can refrag unless there's somebody pushing from that master door, mm -hmm. which is where they were. So part of that was also the way that Immortals read that. Yeah, it was because, good. It was good because in order to try to push Astro, you're going to either need to have somebody on those stairs, which you'll be alerted to right away, or you need to push through the, the main master bedroom, of which somebody from Immortals was there covering it. So, uh, fair play to them. But ultimately, there were just so many things that went wrong for Pain there. It's really hard to do an actual post-round breakdown, because the post-round basically breaks down to drone better. Another thing to note is that Immortals have been clearing, uh, when they were on attack, Immortals have been clearing downstairs, right? They've been playing that vertical game heavy. And Pain did nothing to counter Immortals, nothing at all. And then there, Pain tried to do a horizontal roam clear that came from Master. It was an AVG defense, I don't know if you guys noticed, because the round took place entirely by Master and uh, Statuary. But it was an AVG defense, and all of the defenders were fighting the attackers by Master and Statuary, and that's because Immortals saw where Pain were trying to clear and directly countered them. Which is what exactly what we didn't see from Pain on their defensive half.
No, and, and I'd imagine that Payne is likely going to invest quite a bit more time in droning, and that is a problem for them, because if they are not the most proficient droners, then you lose that time in the latter half of the round. Yeah. So think of it as a trade-off. You spend 40 seconds droning, you capitalize, and you get two kills. You've now got maybe an extra 20 to 30 seconds to be able to pull off your execute with less pressure. But if you spend a minute 30 droning, and you don't get anything for it, then that means you're going to have to push the attack. And if you don't win those gunfights and have yourself in a position to trade off, then you're going to be starved for time, and the utility is going to favor the defenders in that point. So think of time as a trade-off in this situation. Immortals already in a good position, all things considered. They've adjusted their strategy to a much wider roam, and that's going to aid them in exactly what you were talking about, wasting the time, because the extensive droning that Payne are committing to right now it's going to cost them a lot in the way that clock. They're also, though, focusing on a clear into Masters, so not entirely inefficient. Gas Canister is trying to deny that. GCR is going to eat a lot of damage. He is really happy that the Valkyrie MPX does little damage overall right now as he barely managed to survive. But C4 from Nobbies will find its mark, and that's the, har the lone hard breacher of Gabriel's taken out. That means the Master Wall will not be opened. Perfect time for them to reset GCR. You will need that Ash battling at better spirits than the one or two HP she had available to her. Yeah. Cybra in a good roam, still unable to be hunted down. Uh, Bullet also going to take down FK1, and there you go. That's the uh, top bragger for Pain Gaming gone. So one thing here that Pain hasn't been doing by running this sledge is allow them to be able to police the bottom floor. You have an IQ down there to be able to take out the gadgetry on Immortal side of things. You look at the Mute Jammers, you look at the ADSs, you look at the possible Valkyrie cameras that are prime targets for uh -oh. Bolts here. But spawns as that sledge cannot give the same kind of headache to Immortals that Immortals could with the Buck. Looked like we were going to see a brief entry from Revolt inside oh, no. a study, and he just doesn't look. But he's very lucky that Cyber's going to miss. He misses himself, and Revolt will re-engage, but doesn't know where Cyber is. Spawns was able to grab a kill as the sledge down below, and will now have to push in. PX with the AA-12, excuse me, absolutely demolishes GCR with a gun that we almost never see in Pro League. And M-King will pull out his own shotgun and put his team on the match point, as Immortals are making this defense a quick one. They're perfect so far on both Aviator and Trophy, and Payne will have one round in hopes of trying to stave off defeat. Pretty much all of that round was exactly what you were talking about in the pre. Uh, I mean, we saw a lot of droning from Payne early on, and then we saw no droning in the end of the match, or the end of the round, rather, because, well, very nearly the end of the match. We're getting there. Potentially, this could be right here at the end of the match. Anyway, in the end of that round, we saw little to no droning, especially like that IQ, for example, entering into study. Why? Because they already used all their drones. They got shot by the roamers, and they also used all of their time. They couldn't wait any longer. So they also lost a lot of manpower on the initial entry, so pain overall, a very inefficient round because they were too afraid of Immortals. They didn't clear out the roamers downstairs. They didn't clear out the roamers on the horizontal. I mean, they're, they're, overall, it was a really poor round from pain. And Immortals had a great roam. And that's that's pretty much it. On top of that, we also saw that C4 take out uh, Gabrielos on the uh, Thermite, which is really about the worst thing that could happen in terms of the actual push into the site. If you looked at whether C4 was tossed as well from Immortals, that was in the position that the Buck had torn apart onto Pain Gaming. So once again, really underscoring Operator Utility here, because when Immortals was attacking the Trophy Statuary, the Buck completely tore that floor out. And you could see there was three significant holes there, which doesn't allow you to play over top of those holes, providing that there's still an attacker down below. There was no ability with the lineup that was being ran from Pain to be able to do that. And because of this, you were able to just sit there. And speaking of the Buck, He's gone. Totally demolished. Cyber will get the very first kill on the spawn peak uh, on the GCR. If I'm not mistaken, that was the balcony run out from the bathroom window. That should never work. Attackers have located Unfortunate. Attackers have Unfortunate is the word. A rush in here, actually, from FK. I don't know. M King's not going to notice it. And he's going to die. No, he's just going to be down. Navi's, what a save! Oh, that is terrible. The aggression from Pain almost paying off. It will finally get the kill on to M King. And Spawns is also going to take down Bullet. So we see ourselves in a three versus three. This is the best attack we've seen from Pain so far. And it's thanks to their unbridled aggression. 
One thing that Cyber has at his disposal up top, though, is that open hatch. So he can continuously dump goo mines down to try and stop a push from at least one third of the main entries in towards either of these bomb sites. That's exactly what he does. As Gabrielos will engage with Navis, Valkyrie will get away a little worse for wear, but he's going to wear it well with just about 5 to 10 HP in the danger zone at the moment. Still, you've got PX playing this really tight angle behind the downturn table. And with the Alda, he's going to be able to take anybody out of the fray if need be. He's not going to be running the AA-12 this time around. I wonder if that was actually a mistake or if that was a deliberate choice. Well, sometimes the game does just randomly swap your guns, so that might be what happened there. But he made it work. Uh, yeah. He played proximity on, or close proximity on the bathroom door and worked out for him. So uh, Payne have realized they have plenty of time here. And they're using every second. You saw Revolt's drone was on the other side of the map, but I mean, he has a whole minute still, despite that fact. Cybera is going to actually push himself into. Why would you vault that? Uh, sorry, Cybera is going to push himself into pillars in Master right after being droned out. This sledge will give his life away. And uh, PX able to finally take down Gabriels, who is challenging the doorway into that storage room. Revolt's able to take down Cybera upstairs. So finally, the vertical roamer will be eliminated, leaving just the Jackal. I don't know how he can play this, but if he stands up, he, Navi's might actually be, or PX might actually be able to see this. Great C4 tossed him from an evil eye, and that'll be all she wrote as it gets thrown out from Navi's. And this one was over before it really ever seemed to start. Yep. No discredit to either of these teams, but that was Immortals absolutely plowing through Villain, making the Italian countryside their own. A 7-2 scoreline will give the best team in Latin America statistically a bit of a buffer over Nip in second place as they'll pick up those big three points. And Immortals will jump up to 10 points so far through four play days. Yeah, that was a dominant match. Just going to that, leave it at that. That's, that's also really good score-wise. Um, 6-2. It was a 6-2. It was indeed actually a 6-2. Well, it was a 7-2. 7-2. 7-2. 7-2.